Hey, what is up guys? Gita Rock here. Welcome back to another counter side video. Today we'll be talking about operators. Hopefully a simple guide for you guys to get started about operators because I'm not sure when this will come. In my chat during my live stream that this operator will come really really soon, like maybe one or two weeks away. I can't verify that, but just in case it actually comes soon, hopefully you guys can be prepared for this. Oh, we just got a dive right there. Alright, let's jump into it. Now let's start off with what is an operator. Now if you guys are not familiar, right now as you guys, uh, if you look at what we have right now in terms of our ships, most ships have three skills. Alright, you have a passive skill, you have uh, one active skill and one more active skill. Except for some uh, ships like maybe this particular business sedan which doesn't have any skills at all. So whenever you use any of these ships in battle, you have two skills available for you to use. But operator allows you to use one more skill which you can activate throughout in the battle. So just think of Operator as a third skill for your ship in most cases that you can equip to any ships. It's not locked to one particular ship. You can just buy an Operator and just use that Operator throughout, uh, equip it into any of the ships that you are currently using in a way. Now, how do you get an Operator? Operator can be obtained via a couple of different methods and the best way to obtain them is to use your Task Planet points. Alright, so this is the shop uh, we currently don't have this yet, this is the furniture, but if you go to the planet task mall thing right here, as you can see, there are a couple of things that you can buy. 2000 uh, task planet mall points, you can buy the SSR selector and stuff. And then you can see this thing that is locked right now. This material is specifically to level up your operators, which we're going to jump into shortly. But to buy operators, you can actually come to this section. Obviously, we don't have this yet on C server, but in the future update, once operators are introduced, the methods of obtaining them should be the same. This is one of the few methods that you can obtain operators. As you can see, some of the operators available to us, and most of them cost 3,000 task planet points. Now, that means that if you are on C server right now, my advice is try to save as much as you can because 3,000 points is a lot. I'm not sure how many of you guys have. Some of you guys might be buying all of these every single week or every single month and then you'll have no spare task planet points to basically obtain operators if they ever come in the future. So try to have at least 3k spare to save starting from today onwards when you watch this video. Now you can also pull for operators, but this is not recommended. If you try to pull for operators in the gacha, it's very risky because there's no PT. So essentially you could be wasting lots of lots of pulls and you might not even get what you want specifically. But it's also one of the few ways to only obtain the R and the N and the SR operators. They will only appear in the gacha. Because right here in the list that I've shown you guys. By the way, do you guys like the new Hilde looks? She looks really, really young. As you can see, all of these are the SSR operators, unfortunately. So if you want some of the lower rarity operators, yes, you will have to pull a little bit. But ideally for most players, it's highly not recommended because you're just wasting your tickets, whereas you could save them for regular SSR character pools. Now, shout out to Honeypick and also this article translated by Nira uh, for this particular Google Docs. I'll link it below. Now, let's talk about how to raise an operator. There's apparently going to be different currency like the one I've shown you guys earlier. So these are the level up. Looks like a USB drive of some sort that you can level up your operators to try to get their levels up as high as possible. Now these are called operator tactical data and apparently there's multiple rarities of it as well. As you can see, you can also convert, you can easily get this by selling your existing operators. So you might have to do some pulls if you're trying to level up your operators fast because you are going to need a bunch of this thing to get them to level 100 per se. So these are the charts showing like what you get as you convert them. So the lowest rarity will give you five of these four of these, whereas the highest rarity, if you were to convert and sell them, it will give you eight of these and four of these looks like the SSR level R material. So according to this guy from the guide, it's better to con it's better to get them by converting the N and R operators and you should avoid converting your appraisals in the workshop because it's very inefficient. And for most operators, you can easily make them to level 60 to 70. Apparently, there's not much stats difference in level 70 and level 100. And one thing to note off is you need operator dupes like duplicate to basically level up the active skill of the operator. Now this is going to be a pain in the butt. It's definitely going to be a long term thing to have a maxed out operator. It might take a while. Now let's show you guys the success rate of some of the operators right here. So these are the operator active skill level up success rate for each rank where the SSR 
have a 100% success rate, but once you go to the lower rarity, apparently it's very very low. 8%, 15% for the rare, and 75% for the SR. Now, passive skill is going to be a bit different. You can use any operators to level up the operator's passive skill as long as they have the same passive skill. Now, SR plus will be recommended, obviously, to level up the passive skill. Apparently, you can change an operator's passive skill, but it looks like it's really, really expensive because if you want to change the passive skill of an SR operator, you will need either SR or SSR operator. And it's maximum of 50% chance or rate rather. So better to use dupes to change skill. So let's have a look at the passive skill that operator can provide you. All right, there is this thing called the air damage resistance, crit damage resistance, versus formation damage, and speed up. So this one is apparently, you know, not recommended. And then there are some that would be really really good for example ground damage resistance aoe damage resistance which are highly recommended hit up evasion up attack speed up crit damage up long distance damage resistance and short distance damage resistance resistance i believe it's going to be melee damage resistance and range damage resistance for those so apparently hit and evasion is going to be much more suited for pvp Crit damage and attack speed is more for PvE. Ground damage resistance is going to be really good for PvP as well, I assume. It's good, but max level 10%. Distance or range damage resistance is good, but max level 15%. AoE damage resistance, max 20%. But if enemy deals with basic attack, it doesn't work. So it's mostly going to absorb skills. And that sounds really broken as well. Now with that being said, let's have a look at the list of operators right now. Currently that they have in KR server. So there are a couple of N operators right here, the entry level automata, the academy senior right here. You can see each of them have their own individual CP, their ship HP, additional uh, attack, defense, skill haste, etc. So you can see the cooldown right here uh, for some of these are 75 seconds or some of these are 90 seconds depending. All right, so there's definitely plenty of, you know, operators that you can look at. So uh, Lina, McKinsey, I believe she's going to be one of the recommended ones for beginners. If you don't know which one to pick in terms of operator, Lina is the one that's been recommended, that's been thrown around. Free right here, you can see the stats, and it's going to affect all squad members. So keep in mind, some operator skill will affect uh, squad members, but some will affect the enemies, depending on what you want. You want to debuff the enemy, or do you want to buff your own ally? So this one will give you attack and attack speed, plus 15%, 8% at level 1, 1% for each level. Attack and attack speed is going to be definitely beneficial for sure. 75 seconds cooldown, pretty good as well. Alright, Olive Park and Lee Suyun is going to be quite good as well. So Olive Park is going to give you damage resistance 15%, HP recovery, and immunity to, I believe, debuff immunity right here that she has, which is really, really good in PvP as well. And you can see there's Replacer King, there's also Sigma Operator, and I believe the Moneka and Mansion Master are the most recent addition in the KR server. Now, recommended operators for beginners. If you are new to this operators thing, you think this is too much for you to handle, just get these four and prioritize on them first. All right, first up is Lina. So she's definitely good for all situations, but the con is she has no special skill. All right, she's definitely the first recommended SSR operator to get, followed by Lee Suyun, all right? So Lee Su Yun is going to be good for striker squad and personally I'm going to get her first because I do think that I'm a big fan of the striker team and I do have the striker ship exclusively. So active skill only affects strikers. She does give immune to stun for strikers only. That's going to be really really broken and you can use that against Sylvia. Next up is Olive Park. She is really really good for PvP. Now a lot of you guys might be complaining that the soldier team are not so good right now because of Adele and Harap maybe. But once Olivia Park comes, perhaps that might change the PvP meta in Soldier's favor again because I feel like she gives immunity to debuff, damage resistance, and HP recovery. Those are really good skills to help your Soldier team to overwhelm the enemies. I think that's going to be quite good overall. The con is hard to activate. It's more defensive than adding your damage, definitely. It's a much more defensive skill. Debuff immunity is good for PvP, for sure. But I'm not sure if it works against Harap's uh, confusion. I guess we'll have to find that out in the future. And last but not least, Sigma. General usage, for sure. Easy skill activation, great on defense. So if you guys are not familiar what Sigma does, uh, creates a barrier of max HP plus 20% for everyone, all squad members. And versus formation damage plus 50%, while the barrier is on and barrier cannot be cancelled as well. So that is really, really broken. So which is why Sigma as the operator is definitely 
going to be one of the most favorable. All right, guys. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this brief little uh, introduction or guide, whatever you want to call this, for operators. I'm not sure when they will come, but when they come, I hope you guys are prepared for them. Save as much planet tasks, more points as you can. I'll leave all the relevant links in the description below. Feel free to check them out when you're free. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, give this video a like. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.